This week, I am guiding John and Sally Holesheater, and they have drawn two Arizona elk tags to hunt my favorite Unit 9. Located on the south side of the Grand Canyon, Unit 9 is where I believe the biggest bulls grow, and I have been successful guiding my clients here for many years. Last week, we had a phenomenal archery elk hunt with John Holesheater, and he took an amazing bull from Arizona's famous Unit 9 in the closing days of archery season. This was an old bull, one of the largest 5x5 bulls we have ever killed. He stretched the tape at over 340 inches with long main beams and incredible time length. Now, it's his wife's turn. Sally has waited 21 years to draw the most coveted tag in the state. A simple piece of paper that allows her to hunt Unit 9 with a rifle during the peak of the rut. I'm Steve Chappell, and welcome to Elk Camp. Because it's so hard to draw even one Arizona elk tag, this is the first time in 20 years of guiding in Arizona that I have had a husband and wife both draw tags for the same year for back-to-back -back hunts, so I knew it was going to be special. The unique thing about this experience was that John and Sally, husband and wife, both drew tags on the same year. A pretty incredible thing. Now, obviously, uh, having the bonus points that they had, you know, made that happen for them. But this is the first time that I've ever been able to hunt with a couple like this, that one had an archery tag and one had the early rifle tag, and that was John and Sally. This year the rut had been late to start. It was slow until the last week of archery season. Not a lot of rutting activity, but now it's heating up and the bulls are responding to my calling. It's opening morning, and it's already better than the bow hunt. We called in about a 320 bow already right off the bat. I mean, first shooting light. Take, take her where the big ones are. She's the luck charm, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we just need to go find a big one. That was a nice, pretty bull, though. Let's go see if we can call in another one. Okay. This time of year, the elk are always on the move. The herd bulls have a large harem of cows, and the satellite bulls are trying to get in on the action. It's a pretty crazy time to be an elk. So we needed to be mobile and cover a lot of ground. Bugling to locate the herds, then move in once we get a response and set up, hoping to call a herd bull into view. A lot of times, all you get are the satellite bulls coming to the cow calls, but it's some pretty fun action. This bull came to the calling and at first glance had my attention, but upon closer inspection, his top left antler was broken off, and as he walked into the timber, I knew that the rest of the hunt was going to be epic, and it just felt like we were on a collision course with success. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference. 
This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Zeiss Sports Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. The next morning we were back in the same area, looking for the herd bull that we had heard the evening before but never laid eyes on. So far we had called in two of his satellite bulls and it wasn't long before we were back in the action. This was the third satellite bull we had called off the edge of this herd. Another good, young 6x6. And if the size of the satellite bulls was any indication of how big the herd bull was, we were chasing an Arizona monster. Our next setup produced another close call in, a young 5x5, and the bugles in the distance told me we needed to press on. actually coming to us from the calling back yeah. there. Mm -hmm. He was coming across this open burn and we just happened to meet up with him. I hope that little bull didn't yeah. spook him. I didn't want him to bark. A lot of times right, when right. they come in and they're unsure, but if you just show yourself, then they'll leave without barking. But I thought he would go that way instead of running. But a lot of times they go mm -hmm. toward the other bugler, so. Done. Guns clear, safety end. Thank you. Never left home. <laughs> that afternoon we left camp and drove out to the hunting area, but this time I wanted to approach from another direction. After a short walk into the hunting area, we located a bugle in the distance. I decided to move up to the edge of a large meadow and get set up. Sometimes a herd bull will push his harem into a meadow just before dark. We had a good setup and I started calling. We could hear the bugles getting closer and closer. And then a bull stepped into the open. We could have easily shot this bull, another nice 6x6, six six, but we decided to pass. The cost for Arizona is high, and patience is the currency. You pay when you wait 21 years to draw a tag, and then you pay when you walk away from bull after bull. On this night, we paid up again and headed back for camp. Light gave way to the stars, and we looked forward to yet another tomorrow. Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to my brand new Heartbreaker Elk Call by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. Now this call is somewhat similar to my other open reeds, however this one has an aluminum barrel which gives it a very unique, distinct sound. Now I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking that aluminum is going to make it sound really loud and possibly harsh and brash, but actually it's just the opposite. 
It actually has a very rich, full, three-dimensional nasal quality to it, and it's just what the bulls want to hear during the rut. It's also got a nice, grippy, soft touch finish. So if you're wearing gloves out there in the field while you're calling, it's gonna feel very nice and soft and grippy in your hands instead of slippery. Guys, again, this is my new Heartbreaker Call by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, available at your local sporting goods dealer or online. Thanks very much and best of luck on your hunts. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We call the game. The next day we were back in the field and it started slowly. We had to cover a lot of ground before we located the elk. The herd had moved a long way during the night, but finally a young 6x6 came to the cow calling. As he ran off, we continued to move up on the herd bull that we could hear sounding off in the distance. It had been a long day, and right before dark, on the edge of the main herd, I convinced this young 5x5 that I was the girl of his dreams. One look at the Montana decoy, and he came in close. But still, he was not the bull we were looking for in Arizona's most prized unit. These elk are really unpredictable, they're real rangy. Um, last night they were kind of off to the southwest here and then this morning they left off to the northwest. So uh, they're kind of staged up in a different spot. If I need to, I'll uh, strike up some calls there during prime time, but we're hoping they bugle on their own and we can cut them off, call them in and get Sally a shot at a trophy bull tonight. After covering a lot of country and not hearing any bugles, I started a cow calling sequence and a bull bugled in the distance almost immediately. I put us on a course toward the bull with the wind in our favor, and as soon as I had a good location, we got Sally set up on the shooting sticks, and I resumed calling. This was the biggest bull we had seen so far, 
a big six by six with long main beams. But Sally didn't wait 21 years to draw this tag just to get in a hurry. So we passed and continued our hunt. We'd always look forward to tomorrow, but at some point, you run out of those, and you have to live in the now and the today, and that day was coming fast. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Zeiss Sports Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. The next morning, I decided to hunt a new area. I needed a change of scenery and some new elk. As we exited the truck to begin our hike, we immediately heard elk bugling in the distance. I knew this area well, and we rushed in the pre-dawn light to get set up on the edge of a draw that had open timber and perfect shooting lanes. And then I saw him, the Arizona monster bull that we had been looking for. The bull Sally had waited more than two decades for, and he was working his way toward us, coming to the call in textbook fashion. I could count the points. He had seven on one side. We had just found the imperial herd bull and its cows. The whole herd was there in the timber, right in front of us. He came in too close and too quick. Sally was laying prone and didn't have a shot. The bull got our wind and bolted. As he was leaving, I hammered him with the calls. He turned to look back from across the draw that legendary look back that has cost so many animals their lives over the years. And Sally was ready. The first shot was perfect, and the follow-up shot made sure he went down quick. As an elk guide, you live for the highs and tolerate the lows. Every season is a challenge. It's part of the life I have chosen. I live for the moments that we experience during a hunt. The sound of the early morning bugle. The sight of a herd bull as he moves toward me through the timber. And the elation of success as I stand next to my successful client as they admire their bull. Ooh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah. Look at all the little points. Is that, is that yeah. worth weight? 23? I guess. 23 points, son? What a heavy stud. Yeah. Oh. He is. Yeah, strong thirds. Absolutely. That dude had some cows, didn't he? Yeah. Look at them thirds. Yeah. That's some really good thirds. Yeah. But it's been a phenomenal hunt the whole time. We've yeah. had all kinds of excitement, calling in lots of bulls and we uh, came to this area that I haven't hunted yet. I was kind of saving it for Sally, and <laughs> things things were awesome this morning. We had these. Uh, we could hear some bugling from the truck in the dark, which was encouraging because the bugling's been kind of slow all the way around. But 
uh, got up here, kind of got a good draw here, and we got on the other side over here, and I blew a couple of cow calls, and the cows across the way started calling, and here comes a single cow right at us, and all I could think was, oh man, she's gonna mess us up Please right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And she came in and winded us, and uh, but she didn't spook real bad. And then uh, I heard this bull bugle, so I bugled back at him. And at one point, we had him at about 30 yards, including him. Um, but Sally was anticipating a shot across this draw, you know, like a 300-yard shot. So we had her down prone, and that just wasn't working for the <laughs> close call in. So <laughs> it was looking for a while like it wasn't going to work out at all. Um, but then they spooked a little bit and uh, got them stopped with the call and. All in all, it worked out pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a little nervous about the shot on my knees, but. Uh, you sure made it. Yeah. You sure did. And, and then, then the other one off the tripod. Yep. 280 yards, you got the second yeah. one in them. Yeah. First one right in the shoulder, but just the hair low. But uh, we were going to get him. He wasn't going to get away. But then you made the other one, and then you crashed and burned. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just been fun hunting with you guys the whole time. We've had excitement. A lot of bulls have come to the call. That one a couple evenings ago was a hard one to pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Came up bugling yeah, right in our face. Yeah, like that. We had confidence, though. We knew that sooner or later it was going to work out because we know what kind of guide you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Great, great caller. And if right. you chase those bugles yeah. and look at that, those bulls, eventually it's going to, mm -hmm. this will happen. Well, it's been a really great hunt. Yeah, thank you so awesome. much, you guys. Great awesome. shooting, Sally. So fun thank to you. meet and hunt with yeah. you guys. Yeah. Thanks, John. And I got a nice one with the nice 5x5 five five with the bull one. Absolutely. Yes, so. uh -huh. Folks, that's all the time we have this week for this episode. Please join us again for another exciting episode next week. Hey guys, if you'd like to experience an elk hunt like the one that you just saw, check out my Zero Hunt Fees program. You know, Zero Hunt Fees makes it possible to hunt the big bulls of Arizona on any budget. So log on to ZeroHuntFees.com and see how a hunt like this can be possible for you.